Okay, so this is how Johnny Harris goes viral every single time. So if you don't know who he is, Johnny Harris is a YouTuber with over 4 million subscribers. And if you look at his last few YouTube videos, they're getting like a million views on every single one. But how does he even manage to do this so consistently? So to try to figure out a little bit of his secret formula, I watched every single Johnny Harris video, twice. And I'm gonna break down exactly how I think he does this. So first we have to listen to YouTube expert Mr. Beast talk about what YouTube is looking for in its content. Yeah, <laughs> so essentially, yes, at the end of the day, if you boil it down, what YouTube wants is they want people to click on a video and they want to watch it. Like at its core, that's what it is. Okay, so how does Johnny Harris get people to click and stay for so long? First, let's talk about how he gets you to click. And we're going to obviously have to discuss his thumbnails. We all know that thumbnails are important. No one clicks on your video, no one's going to end up watching it. And as many YouTubers suggest, thumbnails need to be simple. A lot of them say to only put two to three main things in it. This is because when thumbnails are smaller, especially on mobile devices, you can't really see the intricate details if your thumbnails are really complex. But when you look at Johnny Harris videos, it kind of seems like he's not following the rules. Just look at a few of these thumbnails. Every single one of them, except for a few, they're kind of really complex. Here's a thumbnail from one of his recent videos on JFK. This kind of looks complicated for somebody to understand. But if you take a step back and think about it, it does follow the rule of keeping only two to three things in the thumbnail. You can see the image of JFK, the text that says cover up, and Johnny Harris's face. Now his face is there so that fans can recognize him. However, this really only works because he's Johnny Harris. And most smaller YouTubers probably won't benefit from putting their face in the thumbnail. It might actually end up hurting you. And we'll get into how this also affects Johnny Harris later in the video. And it's not just this one thumbnail. Almost every single thumbnail of Johnny Harris looks really complicated, but when broken down, it's actually really simple to understand. But more importantly than his thumbnail, his topic selection is genius. If you look at all the Johnny Harris videos, almost every single one has a huge audience. He knows that it's easier to get large amount of views if the topics that you're picking has large amounts of possible viewers. And yes, viral doesn't necessarily mean millions of views. I mean, it could mean that for you depending on your channel. And for Johnny Harris, it most definitely does. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you make videos about how to clean a swimming pool or something. It'd be kind of unreasonable to expect yourself to get millions of views on a video about pool cleaning 101 or something. So going viral in that specific niche is going to look different. But if you look at all of Johnny Harris's videos, his videos are about geopolitics. And it's hard to argue that he doesn't have a massive possible global audience. So I guess the thing to think about is how could you frame your videos to also reach a wide global audience? And the second thing is, should we all be rethinking what viral means in our specific niche? But going back to how he gets you to click, Johnny Harris knows that viewer satisfaction is so key. There's a subsection of people that watch Johnny Harris videos, me included, that will click on it regardless of the topic, regardless of the thumbnail. And I think people underestimate how much of an impact your previous videos have on the click through rate for the next one. Were your viewers sort of satisfied with the last few videos? It's really hard to see data on this, but if your viewers were satisfied with your previous videos, there's a high chance that those same viewers will click on the next one. And this metric isn't really captured by the simple click through rate that you see on YouTube analytics. And the fourth thing that I think a lot of people are not discussing is that negative sells. What I mean by that is that if you inspect a lot of Johnny Harris videos, his titles have strong negative words in them. These words invoke an emotion into the possible viewer, helping to finalize their click. And if you look at these last few titles, a lot of them are really simple to understand. And they also fit the one line test in YouTube videos. If your videos fit one line on YouTube, it's most likely going to look really good on all devices, which makes it easier for people to see and hopefully get you an increased click Okay, so we covered how Johnny Harris gets you to click, but how does he get you to stay for so long? There's actually a great video by David Mora who explains this very well on how Johnny Harris gets you to stay the entire time. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But for this video, I'm going to focus on a few things that David doesn't touch on. The first thing is his production quality. There's not that many people that can compete with Johnny Harris in his production quality. He most definitely stands out, especially when you look at all the people that make geopolitics videos. Yes, I guess some people criticize him for it, for spending so much time on just the production. Remember, this is YouTube. Johnny Harris is playing the game. And if that means spending more time and more effort than his competition, so be it. And it's hard to actually have some takeaways for all of us in this because not all of us can spend spend the time or the quality or the money to have the same production quality as him, especially when you take into account all the research, the editing, the animation, the fact checking, every single thing that him and his team do. 
and we could sit here and complain that his videos look way better than you and I's because he's got a huge team. Or we could just acknowledge the reality of the situation that everyone is sort of competing with each other for the same set of eyeballs on YouTube. And especially when one person has this level of production that's quite frankly mesmerizing to watch, then that's also really hard to compete against. And Johnny Ayers definitely knows this and uses that fact to his advantage, going so far as to get custom sound design and hiring an in-house composer to make custom background music for every single one of his videos. And this has resulted in the fact that Johnny Harris has created sort of this flywheel effect for his channel. Now usually you hear the term flywheel in business school or in startups, but it also applies here on YouTube. The unfortunate truth is that larger channels benefit from everything. Higher production, name recognition, more money to spend, past experiences, mistakes that they know to avoid. But this happens because of the idea that smaller wins stacked and stacked over time can lead to bigger and bigger wins. That you might not see it right now, but over time it will appear. Not only does this concept apply to the views that Johnny Harris gets, but also his skills. Remember, Johnny Harris worked at Vox before. He's built up years and years of skills well before he even focused on his YouTube channel full time. So this isn't some sort of overnight success that you might think. In fact, it's the complete opposite. And when he did focus full time on his channel, the video views compounded. Viral video after viral video to the point where someone like me and you will watch 100% of his video no matter what he posts. That's truly the power of the flywheel effect in action. Now there's so much I could talk about with Johnny Harris. This just scratches the surface on how much he's truly impacted YouTube journalism. So if you want to see more breakdowns just like this, subscribe.